I am not a blues supporter. I'd just like to say that up front. <laughs> um, Welcome to A Cup of Tea with Brie, where I get to know some of North Queensland's most amazing parents, incredible business people, and inspiring characters. Now, today's beautiful guest is the Labor candidate for Leichhardt. She's got a strong passion for helping others, a dedication to the community, and she's fighting every day for a better future for our region. So please welcome Elida Faith. How are you today? I am fantastic. Thanks, Brie. And thank you for having me here. Oh, look, I love to get to know people because, you know, often... What people see is not actually what's the behind the scenes sort of real real you. So my aim today is to, I guess, get to know where, you know, where were you born for starters? Oh, where was I born? I was born in Sydney. Sydney. I am not a blues supporter. I would just like to say that up front. Um, <laughs> so born in Manly and when I was three weeks old, uh, we moved to Papua New Guinea where I grew up for the first 15 years of my life. Wow. What was life growing up on Papua New Guinea? It was absolutely fantastic. We had a, uh, we grew coffee. My parents grew coffee. Okay. So my life consisted of saving lots of animals, riding motorbikes, riding horses. It was absolutely wonderful and, and beautiful people. A little piece of my heart still belongs over in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. Wow. So how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one beautiful sister mm -hmm. and one lovely brother, both wow. younger than myself. So you're the eldest? I'm the favourite. Right. And I'm the eldest. Right, of course. Yes. So you're the one that sets the tone. That's exactly right. Yeah, sets I, the standard. That's right. I remind my mum every day that I'm her favourite and she nods her head. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. know I am. I do the same with my mum. <laughs> she sort of nods with gritted teeth. That's but, right. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you want to be then when you grew up? Well, it depends on what age I was. I think the very first thing I wanted to be was uh, an air hostess named Cindy. <laughs> Why or Cindy? Or as, uh, as I would say back then, I would like to be an air hostess named Cindy. Why Cindy? I, I had wonder. a little, well, even the little golden books. Yeah. I had uh, a golden book and it was about Cindy the air hostess. Okay. And and we used to... She obviously inspired you. She did. She did. And we travelled a lot as, and I love travelling on planes. I love hotel rooms um, because we did do a lot of that when I was younger, back and forth to Australia. And yeah, I just wanted to be an air hostess named Cindy. <laughs> And then um, as I got a bit older, I changed and then I just wanted to buy a, a big truck and franchise uh, a little business where I would drive around town and um, uh, all the stray dogs would come to the truck and I'd feed them and water them and then move to the next town. And that was one of the other things I wanted right. to do. Yeah. <laughs> And now look at me. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Was, did you ever believe Neither of those things came to fruition? Yeah, yeah. Did you ever think you'd be going down this path? Not in a million years. I'll be honest with you, no. No, not at all. I uh, didn't grow up in a political fa family. I um, wasn't sort of keeping an eye on politics. We moved to Australia when I was 15. And uh, it's just where I have ended up. I think as I, I got older, I, I wanted to know a little bit more about you know, how, how are things working and what's going on in my community? And more importantly, if I'm not happy, how do I change that? Yeah. So you moved to Cairns from PNG? No, we moved to the Sunshine Coast. Okay. And I learned how to surf, did my uh, grade 10, 11, 12, uh, did a stint in Sydney for a few years at Cronulla and then moved back home, you know, as you do when you break up with your boyfriend. So yep. You always move back home. I did that twice. <laughs> Um, I've been with mum and dad to get no, motivated that's right. to get out there in life again. That's right, that's <laughs> right. But I've been in Cairns 19 years and I love wow. it. I'm not going anywhere. I just, Cairns is beautiful. It is a great place. Absolutely family. beautiful. Yeah, and you've got one daughter yourself? One daughter. She's 18, mm -hmm. um, very independent. Um, I sometimes pat myself on the back because I, 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 I was very proud of the fact that she is an independent woman, but sometimes it does go against me as a parent. Yes. Um, and especially at 18, she sort of stops listening as much as she, I would like her to. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty typical of children. That's though, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and she was born and raised in Cairns? She certainly was. Oh, yeah, so she's a uh, yeah, Cairns local girl. Yeah. So tell me something most people don't know about you then. I just learned a lot. Let me bike riding, think. dirt bike riding. Yeah, I love my dirt bike. You love dirt bike I riding, do. don't you? Yes, yes, I know. I um, I love it, but I do like a good four stroke over a two stroke. Though, yes. I'm just saying. But yep. um, what people don't know about me, uh, I'm a vegetarian. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I remember that from the luncheon I did meet you at. Yes. Right? yes. Yeah. What else? Come on. Um, Something juicier than I can than still sandwiches. Oh God, I can still speak pigeon English Ooh. from being in PNG. Me one plus Highland Mary true. Uh, what else do people know about me? Um, I'm going to be, you know, I'm very, you know what, I'm shocking. I'm always an open book. And 
Um, I often get in trouble for probably saying too much about uh, myself, but, you know, I like to share things uh, with people and, you know, um, I can't think of anything more juicy than that. You did two good ones there. I'll, I'll let you off the hook. So tell me, what is one of your most, you know, professional achievements that you're proud of? Professional achievements. That's always a good question, you know, and I suppose for me, it would have been, I think, three, four years ago, I was nominated and also won the Emma Miller Award. Um, and that was for my advocacy and the work that I had done um, in my workplace with my union. Mm-hmm. Um, and Emma Miller, if anyone would, you know, go and Google her. She's a wonderful, wonderful, strong woman. Um, and when you win that award, you get a little um, hat pin because uh, Emma Miller was a bit of an activist. And uh, way back when... Um, uh, her and a whole big bunch of women were were uh, marching the streets, and um, the police were being, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, in their face. And she got her hat pin out and popped the horse's bottom with the hat pin, and that's one of the things that they remember her for because the horse reared up and the sergeant <laughs> fell off. I was just thinking, the poor horse was a poor horse, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so that was one of my and something I am very proud of because yeah. I think we, as women, uh, we don't often get recognised for some of the you know things that we do. So that was of. Uh, Proud moment. So, what was the work that you were doing before? So, I I work and have worked and and still currently working with um, a federal public service agency, and I have been there for twelve years. And uh, at the moment, I'm I'm am campaigning full time, so I'm on leave without pay. I can't say what agency that is, only because it's um, I'm still currently employed by them. Um, yes. So that's yeah, it. I was but, just curious as to the type of work that you're doing. Yeah. So it's an interesting path because you know I can tell you personally, like going into politics, with you know you've got to be pretty brave to put yourself out there, and, and yes. you know you have to be pretty passionate about your community to want to put yourself into the public eye like that and have people, you know. Yeah, it's, media is definitely very different these days, oh, and everyone's yes. got an opinion. And that's stuff, right. for some reason, we've got a lot of keyboard warriors out there. So you that's, know, I think right. anyone that's uh, doing what you're doing is very, very brave. So what's your best personal achievement then? Personal achievement. Okay. Well, that would definitely be my daughter, Mm -hmm. beautiful Tiana. And I think I do take it as a great personal achievement that I have gotten her to 18. Um, I know, you know, as a parent, you never stop worrying. And I swear, when those parents who have already had children when you're pregnant with your first child and they say to you, they grow up so quick. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, isn't that true? Like, oh, yeah. I just can't get over um, 18, driving off in her car, going clubbing, whatever. But um, m- my achievement there, I think, is that, that she has grown up to be the sort of young woman that I would like her to be in the sense that she's, she's compassionate, um, she's individual, she's strong, she's, um, you know, knows what's wrong and right. Um, and so I'm really proud of her mm. because all those years I didn't think she was listening to me, but obviously she was <laughs> oh, to she some was. degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so tell me, if you could have dinner with three people, whether past or present, who would they be and why? <gasps> oh, gosh, I can never stick with three. Um, okay, all right, let's do it. We'll nut it down. Well, definitely David Attenborough because yes. let's face it, not only is that man gorgeous, he's just who doesn't love a man who dedicates his life to the wildlife Mm. in the world um, and I could just I could just imagine sitting down with him I would have so many questions and um, I think he would be absolutely fantastic to have to dinner and the second person I think would be Emmeline Pankhurst um, and uh, Emmeline uh, was a woman back in the early 1900s who was a, a British activist and she was also a leader of the British British suffragette movement um, and uh, it was the work that she had done with the suffragettes that enabled uh, women to vote for the first time. Wow. So I think sitting down with her, she was born in the late 1800s, I think it would be an ama- amazing just to sit and listen mm. to what it was like for women back in those days, you know, not able to vote, not having a voice. And the third person um, I've always said that I would love to have dinner with would be Nelson Mandela because I just think he is an absolute wonderful, wonderful man who um, endured a lot in his life, but he's he's stuck to his beliefs and his passion. And I think you hit the nail on the head talking about going into politics. It it is, if you're truly passionate about something, the only way you're going to make change is 
is to me is almost being part of that change and that's why I've thrown yeah. my hat in the ring because you know I can't just sit back I've got to get in there and you know drive change. that change yeah so what changes do you want to see around North Queensland well where do we start let's not make it too political but what I would like to see is uh, money going back into our education system uh, money going back into our health system I would like to see penalty rates back um, I would like to see more uh, full-time ongoing jobs. Forty uh, percent of the workforce is in insecure work, so it's really tough for people out there. You know, they don't know whether they're going to be working the next week to be able to put food on the table. And um, there is a lot of change, but I think they are. And from me being out talking to people in the community, and I've spent a week up on Thursday Island and Bambiga, um, and will continue to be travelling around. Is they are the top key issues, and of course, then you have the environment, and God knows we need a lot of change there. Mm. And they will be my key priorities. Yeah, because and that's what you're passionate about. I can see yeah. that you know the animals, and you know you're definitely an activist. So I can see that you have very strong passion around those areas. Yes, and people, and people, <laughs> oh, and them too. <laughs> so tell me then, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given that you sort of live your life by? Well, there was, I always, I think there's two, if I could give you two. One of them was from my mother. And I remember every job that I've ever applied for, since I my very first job that I applied for, I've always been lucky enough to get, and I've been successful in that job. And I remember my mum always saying to me, now when you go to job interviews, you always sit, don't cross your legs, sit with your legs together, don't wear big earrings or bold lipstick. For some reason, that's always stuck in my head. <laughs> um, and hey, maybe that's why I've gotten every job that I yeah, apply yeah, for. Yeah. Um, but the other piece of advice, uh, which I absolutely love, is that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Mm. And that's, uh, uh, to me, that's so true. If you're not at that table fighting for what you believe in or what you want, you're on the menu. So always stand up for what you believe in. It's a really beautiful piece of advice. I love it. Well, thank you so much for having thank a cup you, of tea with Bree. me today. Excellent. And yes, and good luck with your campaigning. And um, I'm sure all of us in Cairns will be watching uh, closely as to what happens. So uh, if you'd like to see more of our episodes, then make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on a new episode of A Cup of Tea with Bree, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>